Well, I've got to say that uh, in all full disclosure, I have met this young lady before. So it's not as if she's going to be uh, sprung with lots of questions and that she doesn't know who I am and doesn't know my humour. Uh, we have actually been in each other's company before we were going to meet for an hour and just chat. And six hours later, the waiter said, I'm closing the restaurant. Um, do you want to leave? Um, and I think we did quite good business in that restaurant, especially the amount of beer. No, I won't talk about that, but we had some fun. Um, as you know, this podcast, uh, vlog, and the blog is all about uh, my life living in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I thought it was a pretty unique thing to do. And then recently, uh, I bumped in to somebody online who's from... Uh, a completely different part of the world, actually, um, from South America, from Argentina, and is now resident in Banyaluka. Well, she's actually in Banyaluka. I'm about 20 kilometers north. Her name is Denise, and I'm going to try and put her together in one paragraph if I can. Uh, she's Argentinian. She comes from, is it Cordoba or do you pronounce it Chordoba? Cordoba. In Cordoba. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. She's a traveler. Listen to this, especially for the guys. She's a former trolley dolly for Emirates. Um, trolley dolly is an, an English sort of like slang phrase for an air hostess. So those lovely people that look after you when you fly. Do you remember flying in days before right. COVID? Yeah. Um, she's now a language teacher. Um, she's a digital nomad. I'm going to see if we can tweeze out of her, tease out of her. If she is actually becoming an entrepreneur, we'll find out, uh, get a yes or a no on that. Um, but now lives in Banyaluka. Denise, welcome to the podcast, the blog uh, and the vlog. I could talk for ages about the limited stuff I know about you and I would most probably get it tremendously wrong. <laughs> the only person that can tell us who you are is you. So the first question today is, who is Denise? Whoa, what a question to start with. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm so happy. And it's nice to hear all those nice words about me in, in a whole phrase. So who is Denise? Basically, I would say uh, I'm a very, Denise is a very curious person. And although passport holder of Argentina, I now consider myself to be from all over the place. Um, I'm 31 and half of my life I lived abroad in many countries. So I'm just curious to learn about the place where I live at the moment uh, and just a lover of life and good times. <laughs> How did you come to be living here in the Western Balkans and in particular uh, in this beautiful heart-shaped country of Bosnia and Herzegovina? Well, the main reason is my husband. Uh, he is from Banja Luka and we met in Dubai. We were neighbors uh, for a couple of years until we met. And because of the pandemic, I got fired and we decided it was, uh, I think, the best idea to move here. That is mainly the number one reason, but as we we spoke over some drinks last time we met i also mentioned to you that that would have happened somehow eventually because i've been to this area many times and i just found myself at home so main reason is the husband but also there's a bit of background story about you, the balkans for me yeah you were telling me about serbia and in particular belgrade you know somebody that's coming from uh, a latin american culture um i i know very little about it i have been to ecuador many 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 years ago so i do know that it, it is like almost a polar opposite in some some situations um the culture of of, of western europe to uh, south america and of course southern and southern eastern europe is even different from northern europe and and the culture differences are are quite stark when you first went to a balkan country to serbia for example you know, was it a shock when you got out, got out of the airport and said, you know, what is this that I'm surrounded with? Or did you find it, hey, I'm just in another place? Well, 
I, I think it was a shock, but a positive one, uh, because I was really surprised to found to find so many similarities to Argentina. I mean, I, I only had a background knowledge of what ex Yugoslavia was and what it could be expected to be found there. But once I landed, and of course you have the traditional uh, marks that were left from the history. But then I, I just felt like I was in the streets of Buenos Aires, uh, walking around, coffee shops everywhere. The street is full of people just enjoying a nice day out. Very social um, atmosphere and enjoying life, which is something we do back home also. Um, I just I just think that that was the first shock, to be honest. I didn't know if I was going to find cold people, not approachable, maybe lack of language and having that barrier to communicate and on the other hand i just found really a friendly community welcoming foreigners so i think that was my first shock when i bring uh, british people that i know to the country um for the first time and 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 you know they're with me and then there's other guests that i've met um almost without exception i've said you know what's the first thing that a local said to you and it has been without exception, and, I, and I, it's always, it doesn't shock me anymore, but it did to start off with. Locals say, what the, f did you come here for? There's so many other places in the world to go. And that's to a Brit. How, did you, you know, as an Argentinian, you're quite a colourful person to a person from the <laughs> Balkans, because come on, let's be honest, there's not 101, uh, you know, Argentinians around here. H how did they react when you said, I'm Argentinian? Indeed, yeah. And that, that first encounter was at the immigration, with the immigration officer. So, I mean, being a flight attendant and having been in different situations like this, you know that you have to be serious when you're giving your passport and, you know, passport control is a very serious couple of minutes. So, any question that the officer would ask, I would take it as an interrogation of why I'm entering their country. But after many visits and after a few minutes of talking to him, I realized that it was out of curiosity and he was just confused. Why would someone travel from so far away? They wouldn't know that I was living in Dubai and Dubai is only five minutes, uh, five hours, sorry, from Belgrade. They would think I'm coming all the way from Argentina. And yeah, I would take a few minutes to explain why I'm, I'm there. I think people who visit these countries they have a true interest of finding out what's there unfortunately it's not the common destination for a holiday or you know like a hop you know these hopping countries um i think people who visit they're purely interested and they're coming to find something so yeah that encounter happens all the time still now why are you here <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but when I when I go somewhere f for the first time, and we'll take for an example here, going to Istanbul for the first time, um, a lot of people, <laughs> you know, decide take the camera, walk the streets, take lots of photographs, um, and and try and get that sort of Instagram sort of like story uh, for the friends. Me, I don't know whether it's good or a bad thing. I go straight to reception and say, where's the nearest restaurant? Uh, stop before you answer uh, where they serve real local food. I don't, want, I don't want to go for steak. I don't want to go for Chateaubriand or anything like that. And I just go and I, I just love local food, the smells, because everybody's there chatting away and you get a real feel for it. What does Denise do the first time she steps out of a hotel in, 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 that, in a location for the first time? I would say I would say the same. I would probably do some investigation before, but it would go the same way. Where do the local people go eat and drink and hang out? Not the I think there's a difference between tourist and traveler. And I always try to go with the the traveler, which is the curiosity and the investigation and just getting lost and finding these places. Not the touristic and Instagrammy kind of thing right so i would 100 percent agree agree with you and i just i go where the the most colorful environment is sometimes it comes across as 
probably the first reaction will be like, what the hell? But then you know you're at the right place when you, when you have that reaction. Culturally, for me as well, <laughs> um, I think I really got to grips with the culture of this country when I got together with Tamara because she would take me to places where I don't think any tourists would go. We were off the beaten track. And so, you know, I became culturally aware very early on. Uh, and I'm sure that Jovan, your husband, has done the same with you. The problem for me, and I can say this because, you know, the family I'm with, they love me to bits and they understand, you know, the gloopy Britannats. Uh, it's taken me <laughs> decades to get used to family culture and the traditions and all that sort of stuff that a traveller would never, ever, or very rarely, I would imagine, ever see um, from, you know, giving up a, a planned holiday because there's a family event happening mm. to, you know, family being first. And I think we lost that a long time ago in the United Kingdom. How difficult can I say that? How difficult or not? has it been because now you are in a family unit if you watch your instagram stories you're definitely inside you you're in, you're full immersion aren't you at the moment is has it been an easy uh swimming lesson or are you still keep keep going under <laughs> that's such a nice way to put it um it's true because i think i am no longer a traveler now i'm one of them <laughs> so yeah i think it's an everyday I want to say challenge, but also discovery. Um, I'm, and I'm also trying to figure it out if it's because my lifestyle or the lifestyle that I had no longer exists. And now I am a normal person who lives on the ground and not so much in the air. And I'm part of this social life, right? It's funny what you're saying. Uh, and it's true. Family comes first. Doesn't matter what time. Doesn't matter what day it is. And... I think being so independent for such a long time, depending on others, and I'm speaking even my own family back in Argentina, you know, I think I've always had that sort of distance uh, per se, like I have my life and I'm an owner of my life, but I think here everyone is part of the life of everyone somehow, and it is a challenge. It is a challenge, but it's it's something that you enjoy also because you're part of of a beautiful thing which is family and uh i think i think you create moments and as you said i think it's something that has been lost with time the traditions or the specific dates or the union and everything is about the memories so i think it's it's something positive in the end how do you find the <laughs> coping with and i know it's a for some people it's a very um touchy subject but it, you can't you can't ignore it um, especially in the part of Bosnia Herzegovina where you and I live, um, religion. How do you cope with that? I mean, saints' days, all, all the mystique that they have within their religion. <laughs> it's you know, and I, I'm thinking, uh, and I, I just go with the flow. Uh, have you have you found that awkward? Because I think if I'm not wrong, um, uh, the religions, apart from a small part of Bosnia Herzegovina, are completely polar opposite to what people are used to maybe in South America? Oh, or have I got yeah. that wrong? No, big time, big time. I, actually, that was another news flash per se, because before meeting my husband, I was already introduced to this culture, but now being part of it, as, as I mentioned, like now I'm a family member, it's no longer from an spectator view. I'm part of these traditions. So I had my first celebration of the saint, which I knew about and I knew what it consists of and because I have friends that celebrate, but I was never in the celebration and I was thrown <laughs> with the amount of food, cooking, the length of the, the actual festivities of like being three days of nonstop eating and drinking and receiving guests. And I think although slowly I'm getting used to everything, I, I don't think I will ever. <laughs> and uh, speaking with my husband or with with people of my generation who I ask about these traditions, even I believe sometimes they are having a hard time coping with it uh, and sticking and sticking to what it should be or 
I think there's a, a lot of responsibility regarding these festivities. It's all family related. And again, family, it's number one here. So I think even, even they're trying, the, the locals are, are still trying to cope with, with all of the traditions. How, how are you coping with what I think is one of the, I, I speak German, right? As well as English. So I'm not one of the traditional English people that can only speak English and expects the rest of the world yeah. to follow on. Um, but try as I may. And everybody says it's so easy. All you've got to do is blub. I am telling you, the languages, whether you call them Serbian, Bosnian or Croatian, or I don't know if we go back 30 years, Serbo-Croatian, to me, as a foreigner, as an ignorant one, it's still the same language. I find it the most incredibly difficult, um, both <laughs> grammatically. Um, I mean, I don't know how many, how, you most probably know, you're a linguist, right? But it, it's David, David, uh, David, ooh, David. I mean, there's so many ways to pronounce my name <laughs> depending on the sentence. And I find it so incredibly difficult. <laughs> and sometimes even today, I feel a bit inhibited by it. Um, although I've got, although I've learned my catchphrases to get out of it. Um, you speak Spanish, you speak excellent English. So is this the third or fourth or fifth language for you? And is it as difficult as I'm finding it? Ooh. It's not easy. I'll give you that. Yeah. I, I, I want to say it's not easy, but the more investigation and researching I do on how to learn it, they say it's easy because it doesn't have as many grammar rules as, I mean, okay, what you're saying, the, the different ways they call you. Uh, but then there are some words that don't exist, like the articles. That's easy. There's no the, a, and uh, I know I will never speak it perfectly. I just want to be understood because we know that most people here well, I don't want to say most people, but it's it's not uh, English is not really common around here. So they really appreciate when you try to speak the language or at least you understand. Um, I am trying, but as long as I am understood and they can understand me, then I'm happy. I know I'm probably saying everything completely wrong, but they get the message. So I think that's that's important. I don't know if it would be the same case, let's say, in Japan or in Russia or other countries that I'm not sure how how they will receive my lack of knowledge for the language. All I want to do is be understood and I think I'm getting there. But it is completely different. <laughs> yeah, it's it is. different and difficult. Yeah, I've, as I say, I can speak very good restaurant uh, Serbsky, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get off that. I'm going to say three things that I love very much. I love kaimak and ustipsi, which are, for people that don't know, fried bread balls. So it's not just the Brits that eat fried bread with uh, heavy cream. I like veal, which is cooked under the satch, and I like drinking pear rakia. So I think mm. that if you can do those three things, you've hit the mark. But that's for me as a guy. For a lady like mm. you, three things, three food things that you've almost fallen passionately in love with since you've been mm. here. Wow. Only three we have to pick, yeah? Yeah, yeah, because otherwise it'd be easy, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Well, from the moment I had a Cara Georgieva, oh, my life changed. And every time I come to one of, any of the Balkan countries, I have to have it. Cara Georgieva is the schnitzel wrapped around with the cheese and kaimak inside and deep fried. Very, very heavy food over here, yeah? But it's it's the, um, how do you say it? The permitted of the week, I can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would Second have to thing? say sarma for sure, 100%. Really? I can eat sarma all day. <laughs> I tell you one thing, when it, it starts at Christmas, doesn't it? By the time, mm. we, get, by the time we get to mid-February, I'm slightly going off it. But yeah, oh. I do love sarma. You've had it with sarma. 
um uh, by february some t- i have yeah. and of sure. course if you were here if we had scratch and sniff podcasts at the moment and you just go outside the studio to the left there's a 50 liter barrel of cabbage already fermenting ready for <laughs> for, for next year okay you've got to give me you, you give me sama you've given me karachurjava <laughs> and what's your third one okay let's put a drink since yeah let's go for drink. a drink i'll choose pelinkovac because I found it super similar to uh, Ferne Branca, which is a drink that we consume so much in Argentina. And it's very hard to get here. So to find something similar to it, oh, I think I would have to put it in my top. You're, you're not a tequila girl. I thought everybody in South America drinks tequila, no? No, tequila is from Mexico and it's very hard to digest and to drink. <laughs> Maybe in my 20s, I would have said tequila. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. What you, did to all those, what you did to all those beers was, I have to say, impressive. Um, <laughs> and we'll say no more at the moment. Um, Denise, you are uh, very active uh, on Instagram. Um, you've got a, a growing YouTube channel as well. Um, What's the plan there? What, what, what's, I mean, most people take photographs, static photographs and, and, you know, do poses and everything for Instagram, <laughs> but you're taking it to a whole new level with your storytelling, which I think is first class, although my Spanish is non-existent. So, you know, thank you for putting some things in English, but you, you are very prolific at the amount of uh, content that you're posting, especially on Instagram stories. Um, and You've told us a whole story about Emirates, your air hostess existence on YouTube. Why did you decide to go online and open yourself to the world? Because putting yourself out there comes with a bit of risk. And everybody, when they do things, has a plan. I don't care who they are. Where do I want to go with this? So the second part of this question is, where do you, where do you want to go with your online presence at the moment? Mm -hmm. Well, at the moment, I would say I want to be the eyes of this area. So I want people to see this whole area of the Balkans, of Banja Luka, of Bosnia. Uh, I want to show this to the Spanish speaking public because before moving here, I was doing a lot of research about what it's like to, to live in a country uh, ex Yugoslavia or the Balkans and such. And although I've come on holidays, it's not the same to settle down. And there's no information out there at all. And it's a shame. And perhaps it is in English or it's uh, in Serbian. And I think it's a shame. And I think that someone out there has to be showing what's going on here. There's a lot of misconceptions about this country and about this area and I don't think it's fair to prive people from knowing this so that's my goal right now to to show to the mainly the Spanish speaking public what it's like to be here either as a resident or as a tourist I really love the traditional Europe and and the countries that we all would pick to go on holidays but I think it's not fair that there's also this part of the world that it's not really exploited touristically because of their history. And they've worked a lot. They worked hard to overcome so many challenges. And I think they deserve a million opportunities to, to be advertised and to really show what's going on. It's such a shame, but I speak to people and they really think there is still war here or that, I don't know, they think this place is a province of another country or they relate it so much to Siberia or to Russia. And I'm sure if I put a map in front of them, they don't even know where it is. And basically just give information. You know, in your stories, there's all, you're always, which I, which I find quite fascinating because I'm, I like to investigate how people tell stories. You're always asking questions. Ask, you know, you ask people to ask you anything that they want and you have tremendous uh, engagement. What are the main things that Spanish speaking people respond with when you say, would you like to find out more? That really, really strikes me because I try and do that in English. 
I have to say that most English speaking people who just want to talk about the mid to late 1990s when there were conflict um, and they're not really interested to be honest, yes, there are exceptions. It's, I mean, it's the, the home of, I don't know, it's an oasis for the extreme sports people. So they are a niche. So they are in the minority. But most people say, why do I want to go there? It's got to be messed up. I'll go to Berlin. Um, but what sort of responses are you getting from the Spanish speaking people across the world? I mainly I'm being asked, what is there to do here? Uh, how are the prices? Because I think those are the two number one questions you ask yourself when you go on holidays. Okay, what what's going to be in the entertainment about and how much does it cost? Um, when I would say the third thing would be what is the situation? <laughs> what's going on there? Uh, is it safe? Is it safe to travel to Bosnia? And I've seen 80 countries in the world and I can put Bosnia in a really good place. I haven't done my ranking, but I've seen countries that I was a bit shocked, you know, like, oh, wow, this is considered a first world and I'm seeing this. So honestly, the, the lifestyle that I'm having so far here in Bosnia, uh, I'm still surprised uh, to find the comfort that I haven't found in other places, the infrastructure to to receive tourists, um, the amount of activities and attractions there are, and they're not shown. Even now, I'm trying to look for information, official information on newspaper, online, blogs, and it's terrible to see what comes up every time you type Bosnia. Yeah, I know. When you when later. you go when you go onto the, onto YouTube, it's all about war and nastiness. It's incredible. And then you go to a national park where they don't charge you any fee to enter. It's clean. It has everything in great condition, and that doesn't come up in your top search. That is just unfair. It's unfair. I know there's a whole of, of politics involved, and the internet is the internet. So. If I can use my time and my energy and my potential to bring something back to this country and to this area that really deserves all these opportunities, I'm, I'm number one volunteer to do so. And being able to speak Spanish and English, I think anyone that comes here should, should try to do that and, and help this, this place that really has so much to offer. When I bumped into you online, I said to Tamara, have you seen this girl? She's from Argentina. And she said, what? And we were quite blown away. And then the next day, I just thought, what is happening? You're not the only South American girl in Banyaluca and the area, are you? You do have some friends. We have the mafia. <laughs> oh. The posse. So we're, 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 you've got, tell me the countries from where the other South, well, I, I, I won't, yeah, I'm giving it away. Go on, where do the other girls come from? So we got Venezuela, we got uh, Dominican Republic, we have Colombia, um, that's the Spanish speaking, there's Mexican also, uh, but then we have, out of Latin America, we have Indonesia, French, India. Whew, what else? I think there's, 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 a... there's Sheila from Micronesia, from the middle, from the Pacific Islands. Uh, Philippines. Uh, yeah. It, oh, don't, you find, don't you find it strange though, when you look at the way that the the country is that they have this small, I don't know, small foreigner enclave being built in, inside this country. I do, I do, but there's, I'm sure, not one reason, many reasons why they decide to be here. I'm sure the we all have kind of like a balance, or at the moment of before moving here, we had options. I don't, I really doubt that people who live here, expats, they actually came here as a last resort, kind of like, oh well, there's nowhere to go, I'll go to Bosnia. No, I hands down. They chose to be here for many reasons. So that's also something great to see because, again, 
there hasn't been a lot of exposure to foreigners here. And I like how it's growing slowly in a nice organized way because we know what happens when you have an overflow of tourists or foreigners. But I like to see that the place is opening up to, to welcome people who are not locals. And, and being such a traditional place, I've been received and welcome here like a queen. And just when I say, of course, my looks, <laughs> and then every time they look at me and they speak Serbian and I'm just looking at Jovan, like translate, they get it that I'm not from here. And then it's, it's just, we take it from there, how their politeness or, or they go out of their way to make me feel at home. You got married in, uh, in, a, in a church, which has quite a ceremony. Um, around it was did you find that uh inhibiting at all yes so much <laughs> yeah but I, I think this is something particular because i don't like mm, weddings and all these be it bosnia serbia balkans or argentina or china wherever i just i'm not a ceremony girl i just really wanted to get it over with so i could live here in a legal status <laughs> But I was found to be in the whole whole wedding situation. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Unusual though. Super unusual. Um yeah. And you've been on television, haven't you? I've been on television indeed, yeah. yeah. What, what 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 did the journalist ask you there? Because uh, I'm always surprised to see if they come out with anything unique rather than why are you here, what are you doing? A bit, bit like me in a way. But uh, what was the response that you got from that? I mean, walking through Banja Luka, through the city centre, it's not a huge city. Were people looking at you saying, hey, that's the girl from the TV? Oh, wow, yeah. My Instagram kind of exploded with... Uh people were just showing how happy they are to see foreigners here. And a lot of them, especially the gener the this young generation, they, they speak English or Spanish, and they were so happy to find someone who they can meet and make acquaintance and practice uh, their language skills with. She just asked me, yeah, why I'm here? Is it similar to back home? Um, what do I like about it? You know. The good stuff. <laughs> Did you feel scared being on TV? Oh, no, not at all. Actually, I was happy to speak Spanish and to show it to everyone back home because it was also, a, you know, a good opportunity to, to show Bosnia back home. But they, um, they didn't put subtitles. They had someone put the voice over me. So I was speaking Serbian. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you... This, you're on this podcast because we, we said we want to do some things together. And I think it's really, really good story, you know, to introduce you in a more informal way um, to people that listen, whether it's here in the, the Western Balkans or where else. But you've popped up on a load of podcasts, you, you know, around the world. Um, what are the responses you get from from people that listen to you as a guest, for example, on, on podcasts? Mm -hmm. so people contact you and say, hey, I want to go there to Bosnia or... Or, mm -hmm. or, are, or are they just indifferent about it? Um, they, I, I would say I got a lot of feedback um, asking the questions that I mentioned before because it's not a, a normal destination. Uh, also, what I talk about on these podcasts is the kind of job that I have, which is to teach online. And I also mentioned what a great place it is to come stay here for a few months and work online with a not such an expensive cost of life and it's good if you have an online job so i've been getting a lot of feedback on that and they kind of try to find guidance on how to get here where is it good to settle down to work online what how much would it cost to stay for a couple of months and such so i would say and also it's something that i advertise and encourage i think in a short term this place will be a good destination for digital nomads because of the cost and the good internet and uh, the easygoing lifestyle that you can have here 
I was about that was going to lead me into the next question, which you you answered before I even asked it. How clever are you? Um, but how how difficult is it um, to be like a, a digital entrepreneur to to be a nomad here? I know that you said that there's there's good internet uh, and it is a cheap place, but do you think that the infrastructure is sufficient for somebody to move here? I think they can only come for three months at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. Croatia has now a digital nomad visa for one year, but whether Bosnia and Herzegovina picks up on that, I'm not so sure. I wish they would, because I think I think it's a fantastic thing to do. Was it easy just to transition from where you were teaching before to here? Yeah, for at least for me, in my personal uh, situation, it was because I was kind of doing this on the side besides flying. And after nine years of flying, I was looking for a way out to continue my traveling, but on, on my own pace. So, I mean, all you need is a computer and good internet and a lot of good energy and will. So I think I'm not saying people should do the same thing I'm doing, but there is countless opportunities to work online and you just have to sit down and investigate. At the moment, I have no time to <laughs> to do all the things I want to do. Like there's so many opportunities, especially with this time that the world is living, the pandemic and how how much home office or online jobs have just popped up. I think it's a it's a great chance, and uh, I would I would recommend it to to anyone. It just takes a few, just takes a few hours of your day, and I always recommend these cheap countries per se uh, to settle down for as long as you can or as long as your passport allows it, and just have a good, nice, easy life. Mm, I would agree with that. But the trouble is now we're no longer nomads, are we? We've given up the tent uh, in the desert <laughs> and, and we're now living in bricks and mortar. Enough of that. Um, yeah. Denise, I know you've got to get on because there's, there's, it's a, there's a life to live. But finally, um, what's the future looking like for Denise? What are, if you can share it with us, what are your plans like short, medium uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and long term? Because you are now. Uh, gaining uh, a presence now in the um, digital space, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I have exciting plans and just waiting slowly for this second semester of the year. Let's see what's going to bring, but I'm quite positive about it. So my m- two major plans at the moment are to continue to show what this area has to offer to the Spanish-speaking public so that when traveling gets a bit loose and everything opens up i hope and i am positive that a lot of people will choose this area to come on holidays uh, i have received a lot of feedback surprising feedback of uh people not knowing where this was and they didn't know what it had to offer so i have faith that a lot of people will choose to come around here when they do uh, one of the plans is to be able to receive them, welcome them, and kind of guide them what's the best thing for them to do around here, around the Balkans, around Bosnia. And another really short-term plan is to introduce Latin culture here in Banja Luka. Does that mean you're um, going to be dancing in the bars? <laughs> I can't spoil it. Come oh. on. <laughs> But we're open to (laughs) options. Uh, Just doing, uh, at the beginning, we'll do a lot of free events. Just, you know, pop out at the park and say, we are from Argentina, from Colombia, from Venezuela. Do you want to practice your Spanish? How much do you know about Latin America? You know, just we want to mix the cultures and also give the opportunity to the locals to interact with foreigners since now it's happening that we're all coming here uh, for different reasons i think it would be nice to create this interaction between cultures so that's coming now i'm I'm very excited for the summer and looking forward to to doing that 
Well, I'm looking forward to uh, being around with my microphone uh, and my cameras and, and, and documenting it for my audience as well. Denise, and to thanks learn for... Spanish. Hola. 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 Muy Hola. Bien. And I don't... What's the other word I know? No, I can't say that on the podcast. No, okay. not a bad uh, word. Please. No, not that word. Not that word. Um, thanks for giving, giving us your time. We're going we're gonna to be doing some projects um, together, which I'm quite excited about. Um, and I'm looking forward to, in the very near future, um, most probably here because we've got the space. Um, you like rakia, don't you? What? Rakia. You like drinking rakia. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, it's going to be a long meeting is all I can say. We'll, we'll be talking about some, some, some projects together. It's really cool uh, to have met you. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. Um, and, yeah, I think there's, there's a bright and bubbly future together however if you're going to do things in the park and i'd like to be there too can you give me one of those nice deck chairs and a panama hat and something <laughs> and some alcohol that looks pretty colored with an umbrella in it because at my age oh, yeah. i just got to take it easy darling i've got to take it easy that's exactly what we're aiming for yeah but you got to bring your flower shirt if you have one. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen my oh you're gonna die <laughs> when you see my flower shirts <laughs> yeah looking forward to it thank you so much and yeah people stay tuned because it's things are gonna happen over here <laughs> they are so that's denise from argentina who's well has been here for a little bit and um yeah things are going to start to get a lot more interesting as she <laughs> says goodness me we'll all be saying crack is it caramba caramba dios Car mio <laughs> <laughs> see there you go Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. See you guys.